Well, it is May 17th, 2019, and we are going to go back in history. On this date, 30 years ago, a gentleman gave us a tour of Marshfield. That video is on YouTube and has over 15,000 views, and we thought with the fact that today is a 30-day remembrance that we're going to do a side-by-side -side tour, so stay with us. Brandon Bondorfer here. I am with Nate Heek. Nate and I grew up in central Wisconsin and we've been in Marshfield for a long period of time. Now Marshfield on May 17th of 1987 had just over 18,000 people. As you saw now on the sign, we have 19,118 according to the last census. So we are going side by side with a video that was filmed. And you can see one of the developments here on the left that wasn't here, Nate, was Slumberland Furniture. Slumberland Furniture, yeah. It's been a number of years. Now on the right, Turf Tamers is. I remember this has kind of gone through a lot of changes, but before that, there was uh, Schuer Construction was here. What was uh, what was there in uh, the time? Taking a look here, not much. Just a lot of industrial building, really. We see Figgies Figgy's on the building, left. Yep, right there. Big differences here. They got a lot of trees, which is kind of different because we go through the video, you're going to see no that. trees there. Yeah, when we go through Marshall, we're going to see... Uh, back 30 years ago, there was a lot of trees, and now there's not nearly as many trees as there used to be. Coming over another hill. That building's still there. Steel and fabricated. I wonder if there's as many stop and go lights 30 years ago. That's as a good point. I wonder that too. We'll have to count them as we go through. Count them and let us know in the comments below how many stop and go lights there is now versus then. This intersection in 87 does not have a stop and go. Now is the is the hotel that's uh, there now there then? It's hard to see to see if he pans over there. I don't think it will. Well, Wheelers is here on yep. both sides. Yep. They went through a remodel and facelift here a few years ago. Historic uh, building, Figgies is on the right here. Yep. On the left, Wildwood Park has been in Marshfield for a really long time, and it's still here now. I wonder if this is the same road. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it. <laughs> well, it's, uh, Actually, it looks a little smoother in the video on the left here. Marshall, welcome to you. That sign's not here anymore. What about the the video of... Um, we got a friend off to our left waving at us. <laughs> Troy, I'm going to tag you in the comments below and you're going to... Don't run into me. We're doing a video here. <laughs> Keeping up with pace on him on the right pretty good. Boy, there is a, yeah, there's the trees. A lot of trees. Now, we're filming this in May 17th. We've had kind of a, a weird spring. May 17th, uh, 1987, they must have had a warmer spring because there's definitely a lot of... A lot of trees full, filled out, yeah. Some of the same billboards are here now as they were then. Mm -hmm. There's a Napa Auto Parts here. That's not here. Yeah, they moved that to the industrial park kind of near Figgies. Right. This an a &W. Was there an a &W in the south side? Apparently. It must have been. Now we got V&H heavy truck on both sides. But this was still a car dealership over here too. See, they have cars and trucks. Yeah, now they're now their car dealership is on the north, north side. Yeah, that was everything here though. I remember that. Man, I'd have been nine years old when this video was filmed. Nine? I would have been. I was born in '83, so. I mean, that would have been. Help me with the math here. I'm four. I think four. Oh, we're going to go through this intersection. One thing that's really kind of cool in both of these videos is just looking back at some of the cars that we see now versus then. Oh, yeah. See City Hall coming up on both sides. If you're watching this 30 years to the date, which would be uh, 20, uh, 40, 49, that would be uh, a long time. Hmm. Boy, you think of it that way. 30 years plus Marshfield has really had a lot of change. Coming into the downtown now, the downtown has gone through a lot of renovation over my period in Marshfield. And... Uh, Looking at the video, though, I think a lot of that is evident that there's been a good amount of change. City Hall looks much the same. Yep. 
Here we are stopping at a stoplight, but there was no stoplight here in 87. That's unique. Was there a grocery? Well, there, yeah, this was called what? It's called Washington Square. That's yeah, right. well, it, which is. is which is still the name of it yeah. now is Washington Square. Very different sign. I certainly remember going there. There was a Caro's food yeah. service there. Yeah, and there was like a... They still had the wine and spirits. I remember that. Now there's a gas station here for Baltus coming up at this intersection. Judges Cleaners was right there. Now, downtown, the road after Highway 13 was uh, rebuilt and Veterans Parkway was created, the downtown really had a kind of a whole uh, overlay that was redone for this intersection. And when they did that, they did a lot of amenity upgrades, all new uh, lights, new intersections. Unfortunately, though, all the trees had to go. And now you can see that those trees are just starting to come back uh, fresh root planted but when they did those intersections right here they found a, a safe that used to be underground right underneath 4th Street. Oh wow. Hmm. BMO yep. was M&I &I Bank, Bank, Bank back at the time. You know mittens you know I see this you always see commonly on the side of this building this tree yeah. and I never understood the tree but now looking at the video from over 30 years ago it almost looks like maybe the tree at one time casted a shadow on the building almost and that's perfectly where it is yeah and decided uh, intersection veterans now we're gonna look off to the right this road is Veterans Parkway yep. this did not exist but uh, when they redid Veterans Parkway and added this I don't remember when that exactly was, but I remember I was in high school, so it had to have been 15 or 20 years ago. They actually moved these buildings back, right. and we won't be able to see in our picture, but that um, building we see on the right is now famously known as Royal Tokyo. In 87, it was just a simple depot building that was uh, vacant. Train tracks are still uh, very much where they are now, but we have... I was waiting for a train in the video, too. Imagine that. <laughs> One big development took place in this corner was Veterans, not Veterans Parkway, but with Veterans Parkway came this gas station, Quick Trip. Yep. You know, that's one thing I do recognize a lot with Marshfield is we have taken a lot of the historical buildings and we've remodeled them, we've re renovated them, and we try to maintain them. But I remember when they put up Quick Trip, that was kind of a big deal because they not only took down a lot of buildings that were here they also closed a road that used to exist between the two oh that's right now we're entering road construction uh which is probably well overdue like the first time since this video since this video even looking at the the lights the yeah. overhead lights right you can see that uh, they look very much the same maybe they were new 30 years ago who knows But Marshfield's getting an overlay, I believe, that's being done, a reconstruction on this portion, which I think is from Upham to Harrison. I could be off on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or no, not Upham, but um, the road back there. I was Arnold. Kinda, Arnold to Harrison. Right here, Associated yeah, Sales and Leasing. There's a gas station there, a Shell gas station. There's a lot of trees around it. Yeah, that's one thing I really just, again, seeing all the trees in his video versus what we see now. You know, another thing I know is houses over here. On yeah. The right side. This whole area was just houses. Mm -hmm. But look at, you know, now I'm looking straight. Once we get past the uh, family video, I mean, you can see all the way back to the mall in his video. I mean, right. it was just tree after tree after tree. Residential. Felt very residential right on Central. And we know, you know, starting with the development of the mall, that the North End had a huge expansion. And that took, really kind of went through Marshfield, even up till you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, with the last phase of Menards and Walmart coming in. You know, we just see, starting to see some redevelopment. Looking on the right here now, coming before Burger King, Burger King changed its sign, but Ford Financial Bank made a big investment in this area. I think he turns right here at Burger King. Yeah, he does. We're good. But McDonald's and Burger King are in the same spots. Parties used to be where Walgreens is now. But how many times has McDonald's got remodeled since this I video? I think it's three times, I think. Remodeled, expanded, yeah. and remodeled again. 
but never moved the okay. right location. Now the mall has gone under a lot of changes, uh, even in recent times. I mean, we now have a Kohl's, which we did not have back then, but we lost like Kmart, uh, JC Penney's, and we see the Yonker building in our video here, but unfortunately Yonkers did close. Yeah, all that's in that big store looking area there. I don't know if it was a ball yet, but there was Kmart and JC Penney with big, big stores there. I remember as a kid, March Madness days, my mom would drag me down here and all the stores, be, it'd be packed and we'd go through all the sales and promotions. Yep. There's Shopco. Yep, and now Shopco, unfortunately, in our video, you're gonna see a going out of business sign. Right, it was in its heyday then, Rocky Rococo's coming up. Now that flag from uh, the flag that you see here was there 30 years ago. Yep, flying big. Pizza Hut is now uh, is now Pizza Hut. It was Rocky Rocky, Rococo. Rocky Rococo's, yep. And this is kind of where the end of his video kind of comes to an end. Oh, almost. Chips was right there. Yep. This was kind of the end of town almost. Ponderosa was where Culver's is. Arby's is still where it was. And here we see Festival Foods with, you know, same layout, same um, as the construction we see taking place here. But that was Rainbow Foods. Yep, it was just getting built. In fact, it wasn't open yet. And I believe back then this was a car wash. Now Office Max built uh, about 20 years ago. And it they just looks like field path. That is it. Look at this, man. So interesting. And it just closed out. This here pretty much was all developed since this video. So we're gonna continue to take you on our tour of right. Marshfield. And you can see that, you know, a lot of this is newer. Uh, Baltus uh, did a big uh, build out here a few years ago, but probably one of the biggest build outs that probably came to our area was this here. I remember this used to be the county mine. Right. And I remember when uh, Marshfield kind of ventured into Marathon County. That was a big deal. Right, right, everything changed. This was all farmland when I was a kid. WDLB did have their building there. It was an old building, I remember that. Yep, and they actually, uh, the guys from Marwood actually bought that building <laughs> and then they built around it. And now uh, WDLB, or I think it's Schaefer Broadcasting, uh, occupies the original portion of that building. No kidding. So Walmart, Dunham Sports. Dunham Sports has changed hands. It used to be a Staples when this strip mall was first That's built. Right. That's right. Wyver's built out here. This Wickersham jewelry we see on the right, that was actually yeah, Wendy's. a Wendy's when it first was built. Remember the, the thick burger was like three patties? I certainly do. <laughs> I, I think I had one too many of those. Sad day when that closed, but hey, Wickersham's a great company there. So there's still opportunities to develop out in this area here. We've seen Aldi's recently built down here. Menards, Applebee's, Goodwill. They relocated from the south end. In our original video, when we passed uh, 14th Street, they were originally located there, which That's I right. believe now is, um, I believe now they have um, uh, Bullseye Sports is in there, which they actually moved from downtown near where Walgreens used to be. Hmm. So one of the things that we first saw in the video was the V&H uh, Automotive. And since uh, that video was shot, uh, V&H moved out here. All the way in the north side, yep. And uh, now their automotive is here and their truck division is on the south end. And as you guys probably saw in the beginning of this video that the V&H is now called I-State. So as we make our way to the clinic, which I think is probably the next biggest development, and then we'll uh, kind of wrap up our tour of Marshfield. Kind of, I'm just gonna ask you, Nate, as a child, I mean, what do you remember most about Marshfield? What are some of the buildings that kind of just stand out? Yeah, I mean, the clinic always was something I remember driving in from 97, because I came from Stratford and you could always see it in the distance. And it always felt like this really big, not almost a skyscraper, I guess, in my day. But we didn't see much else, right? I mean, it stood out on that hill and you know, I remember going to Shopco. I remember uh, Ponderosa was a, was a childhood memory. So those are some things that I do remember. And now a lot of those things have changed so much. Well, yeah, Ponderosa is now a Culver's. Yeah. It was a steakhouse in between there. And much of the Culver's building, if you go in it, you can recognize yep. the old Ponderosa portion of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Uh, the entrance that moved from one side to the other. Bathrooms are in the same spot. Yeah. <laughs> You know, one thing I remember, especially about the clinic, is I remember going on a, I remember visiting my grandma.
great grandma when she was in the hospital. And I would, I think, I don't know what floor she was on, but I remember looking out the window on a clear day, you could see Rib Mountain. Hmm, no kidding. And Rib Mountain, for those that don't know, is near Wassa uh, or Rib Mountain Town, otherwise. And it's a large granite hill. Uh, I think that erects over 1,900 feet above sea level. It might be higher than that. We're not uh, historical buffs. So in our original video in over 30 years ago, none of this was here. This was a farm at one time. Yep. McMillan, I think, was here, but it certainly was just a farm, farm road. Yep. I remember when Target was built. Yeah, you too. I remember my mom brought me out here because <laughs> uh, I think part of their grand opening celebration, they brought one of the people from Young and the Restless, one of the actors, as part of their grand opening celebration. Really? <laughs> now we talk about big box retail, and unfortunately, you know, shop goes closing, Kmart's gone. You know, we do have Target, which seems to be doing good. Uh, Walmart seems to be busier as well always but you know online shopping is definitely I think impacting some of these big box retailers oh, for sure it is you know looking back at that population sign you know someone that might have first looked at that sign and thought to themselves you know 19,000 just over 19,000 30 years ago just over 18,000 you know if I was to look at the community and say wow that's not a lot of development you know, you have to ask yourself, is that healthy or not? Yeah. Here on the left, we got rail has put a lot of money into Marshfield, and they did so with the expansion of this field house on the, the YMCA. YMCA. Yeah. But going back to that number, you know, I think what pop, a lot of people don't recognize is we've had a lot of development, uh, definitely with business and industry here in Marshfield, but a residential population in the city limits just hasn't really increased that much. You know, quick figures, you know, only 5%. And over 30 years, you look at towns like uh, Eau Claire and Wassa and Fox Valley, they just they just blown up. But I do think that towns such as Stratford or Spencer or Auburndale have actually increased in population more as a bedroom community to Marshfield. And that's where I was going with that, is you've seen a lot, even like Hewitt, yeah. you've seen a lot of these areas, and especially just outside McMillan here, uh, Avenue to our right, there's a lot of infrastructure and housing that's been built near the city. Sure. So coming up on our last destination, we'll just take a peek look here at uh, Security Health Plan. Uh, that building was definitely erected in 30 years. Stony Rivers did not exist, that's for sure. This was a church, in fact. Oh yeah, Faith Fellowship, Faith Fellowship was, was right here. Yep. Which if you guys look, recall just a minute ago, Faith Fellowship was actually behind us. Yep. So that's kind of a, a development. And there's a lot of vacant land still up here. I don't know how much the clinic owns of this. Probably all of it. But they put a dental facility out here. And then the last thing that I always remembered is this used to be like the major road coming to the clinic. And now I never really see taking it. You know, when Highway 13 didn't come right through downtown, it came through the area that's being redeveloped now. Just see if we can get a nice little shot here of the clinic. I think I have an aerial shot that we can add to this video. If not, you have to tune in for another shot. But this used to be like one of the major roads yeah. in the Marshfield. And unfortunately, farm, yeah, 15 mile an hour curves. I remember that. Yep. <laughs> Still is the same way. I'm actually going to 19. But this is known as Snob Hill or Sto Snob Hill. Is it? Yeah, that's kind of the, for those that live up here, it's one of the highest points in Marshfield. Everything pretty much rolls downhill from here. Makes sense. But it's also one of the areas that has the worst cell phone coverage. Hmm. You wouldn't think that if it's a higher point. So the last thing I want to show you guys is just uh, the back way coming into Marshfield. Uh, that he will come back with our video. There's our street superintendent now, Dean Schillinger checking out our roads I'd like to see an aerial shot of the cemetery then versus now mm. but it's bigger <laughs> I read an article that was on CNN that last year was the lowest birth rate 
in the United States in the last 30 years. Hmm. Now, I don't recall looking at his video, but was Fleet Farm in, the, in his video back then? Yeah, Fleet Farm still existed, yes. It's probably the original building still, I would imagine. Now, it's been rumored for years that they were going to rebuild on the north end, but I've not seen anything come to that. South end, you mean? South end. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see him moving at this point. Yeah, that's the original building from the video. In the south end, you know, Marshall and Julie had grown in two directions, north and south. It hasn't really grown much east and west. And what I right. think is unique about Marshfield is a lot of business is on that main drag or Central Avenue. Yeah, almost all of it. Now, in his video, uh, you were able to see, we'll pull back to that now, as you pass Fleet Farm here, this used to be the way you came into Marshfield. It's two-lane road only. Yep. It was Highway 13, and then when they redid Veterans Parkway, they redid this. Now, the challenge is, we're going to take a little detour here and cut to our video. It actually, during the construction of this, this road curved and went down another road. It didn't pass through That's here. right, over there. Yep. So right about now where you see that semi up ahead, that used to curve to the left and connect with another road. Highway Y, I think. Yep, which has been Highway Y. And we're going to take a little detour here and see if we can get to that same section of highway just to see if we can have that last comparison. And then look at the downtown from another angle, and that's going to kind of wrap up our coverage today. Over 30 years since that video was produced, Marshfield has definitely had a lot of changes. And a lot of this roadway is actually new because of that construction. So sure. if you were coming down Highway 13, I'll tell you when you'd reconnect, we're gonna be able to see a, a Marshfield welcome sign in this picture. And off to the right is the Veterans Parkway, which is now Highway 13. But right here is where you would have came into town. And I remember when they put in that big overpass for that train, that was a, a lot of work as they dug all that out. But I remember this was the way in, yeah. Right here we are on the old road. Yeah. It's interesting, you drive this stuff every day, but then you start seeing it from that nostalgic point of view. It's pretty interesting. Oh, it's it's made it's crazy. Arnold. That's the street we've been looking for all day is Arnold. Now I believe this was a, was a stop uh, and go. There was a stop and go here, yeah. Now this doesn't feel that much different. Not this road, yeah, I agree. Power lines look relatively close to the same. Housing, you know, this is one area that I would imagine that you might see in the next 30 years, a major housing redevelopment, which is one thing that I don't think Marshfield has really embraced. We've not had any uh, really big uh, redevelopment projects in our housing uh, housing areas or residential areas. We've seen some, you know, for a while there, the house flipping was popular. But, you know, we've seen a lot of business get, uh, businesses in the downtown get re uh, uh, refaced. But not, not residential, I agree. And if Marshfield's that is gonna grow, you know, especially in the city limits, that's one thing that's gonna probably have to... to attract more people to come in. Yeah. And this would be St. Vincent de Paul. They just, I think two years ago, went through a significant remodel and this is where Quick Trip used to be right on our right, right. Yeah. and now Planet Earth moved in their place. This wasn't here. This wasn't here and then this is here. this is coming back into downtown from a different angle. So guys thank you for joining us it's been kind of a fun ride looking back at Marshfield over the last 30 years. I want to thank my co-host Nate Heeg for taking this tour with me. Look us up online if you're watching this 30 years from now and see how now and see how things have developed. I want to thank the gentleman that did the video 30 years ago. Uh, hopefully you are as thrilled as we are to be able to look back at Marshfield and see some of the change that's taken place. I'm Brandon Bonderfer and stay tuned as we continue to cover what matters most to you.